Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. And I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called Ant-Man. It's the latest superhero adventure from Marvel. It stars Paul Rudd, who's the co-writer of this film, along with Evangeline Lilly, Corey Stahl, Bobby Cannaville, Michael Pena, Tip T.I. Harris, Anthony Mackey, Wood Harris, Judy Greer, David Jamachian, and Michael Douglas. It's written by Eager Wright, who's been best known for Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, and The World's End. Along with Joe Cornish, Adam McKay, who's been best known for, for movies such as Talladega Nights and uh, <laughs> Step Brothers as well as uh, Anchorman and it's directed by Peyton Reed who's been best known for directing films such as the original Bring It On the cheerleading movie and Down With Love with Renee Zellweger and Ewan McGregor the movie begins when a scientist named Hank Pine who's played by Michael Douglas has attempted to replicate his shrinking technology only to occur that it's very dangerous and he vows to hide it as long as he lives. He also just re from S.H.I.E.L.D. You know, after finding out what's going on. Yeah. 26 years later, his estranged daughter, Hope Van Dyne, who's played by Evangeline Lilly, along with her former protege, Darren Cross, who's played by Corey Stahl, have forced him out of his company, Pine Technologies. But Cross close enough to actually use the shrinking suit of his own, which is the yellow jacket. So meanwhile, a well-meaning thief named Scott Lane, who's played by Paul Rudd, who just got released from prison, moves in with his old cellmate and best friend, Lewis, who's played by Michael Pena, along with his friends. Lane's ex-wife Maggie, who's played by Judy Greer, has engaged to a policeman, Paxson, only agreed to let Lane see his daughter, Cassie, if he provides child support, which during that particular day after, you know, he got fired from his job at Baskin Robbins. Almost getting enough time to see Cassie on her birthday, which uh, Lane actually gives Cassie a stuffed rabbit, a very creepy one. <laughs> yeah. Which, sad to say, um, his wife couldn't let him in, uh, especially when she's now married to a police officer. So after that, you know, because of his criminal record, Lane agrees to join Luz's crew to commit a burglary for money. What he didn't know was that he actually broke into the house, which turned out to be an old safe, which has already been locked and sealed for years and only discovered that there was a suit inside which happens to be an Ant-Man suit. Yeah. He begins to find out it was a, a motorcycle suit at first so then he takes it home and once he tried it on he accidentally shrinks in himself into size of an insect and already being terrified by the experience once he was inside the tub and and he went all the way into all the other rooms inside, including that uh, the scene where they were actually having a party yeah, right next door. <laughs> yeah. So suddenly, uh, Pine wants a visiting Lane from jail as as he smuggles the suit into the cell to help him break out. Yeah. So once he was at home, Pine, who manipulated Lane through Lewis into stealing his suit as a test, wanted Lane to become the new Ant-Man. So he steals the yellow jacket from Cross, while Hope wants up spying on while Van Dyne, who has been spying on Cross for Pine to, to despite a restrained relationship with his daughter, helps um, train Lane to fight and control ants. So they send him the device, as yeah, which is sort of a dead giveaway, but it doesn't matter. 
He winds up uh, stealing the device from the Avengers headquarters where he actually fights Sam Wilson, also known as the Falcon. Yeah, which I know that's that's that particular funny scene in the movie, which I really love. Anyway, Dine actually started feeling very angry towards Prime when she found out about her mother Janet's death, which she reveals that known as a wasp, which actually disappears from a subtonic quantum realm, which disables the Soviet nuclear missile, which means that once you go into the quantum well, as he explains, you'll travel back to a different time and you will disappear forever. Yeah. So Prime actually warns Lanes that it could suffer the same fate as he overrides his suit regularly. So then Cross decided to use the little jacket to host an unveiling ceremony at his headquarters. Yeah, with um, with Lane along with his crew and a swarm of flying ants, he um, interrogated the entire building during the event by sabotaging and using all these explosives and actually attempts to steal the yellow jacket which is captured of course by Cross who attempts to sell both the yellow jacket and Ant-Man suits to Hydra and then Lane actually breaks free by dispatching one of the Hydra agents and that's where he wants to yeah, where they actually went up onto the helicopter trying to escape as the villain was about to explode. They went into the helicopter and, you know, with Lane as Ant-Man uh, trying to stop Cross from getting the suit and all that until he wants up wearing the suit and then he wants up attacking through the city and that's when the yellow jacket wants up going inside you know, Cassie's room already been captured so it's up for for Lane as Ant-Man to actually stop him before it's too late and what could I say it's the best superhero film I've seen so far this year after the Avengers Age of Ultron but this one had a lot of comedy a lot of action with this kind of size of an ant yeah but it has everything that they went for I mean you know, it's it's different from Marvel to actually come up with something this interesting. Because it's a movie about simply an ant man who wants up um, saving the world, you know, with his uh, trusty ants, you know, to actually help um, stop a villain who's actually using the yellow jacket to go around attacking everybody. You know, this was basically his plan. Especially when he uses his shrink rays. And, yeah, this, this is sort of in the tradition of, of all the other uh, shrinking movies that we've seen. I mean, I know there were so many of them, you know, back in the 50s and 60s or so. Where they actually go inside out um, a person's body and they're trying to get everything out of there. And they try to stop them because you can actually go inside and fix everything. Or even try to destroy something that's about to attack I mean for that tiny insect you know everything's possible just like uh, Honey I Shrunk the Kids for instance when uh, a scientist named Wayne actually uh, created his own shrink ray where, where suddenly the kids accidentally touched that ray and, and they actually shrink to a, a tiny size but then he actually discovers that all the insects are actually you know giants compared to what you saw but this movie was different. I mean, this was based on the comic. Um, they've been trying to get the rights to this all this time since the late 80s. Yeah, even when Disney already had the film with the similar premise. You know, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, as I mentioned. This one um, is what it were. Um, but this one works because that's exactly what the film was supposed to be about. You know? About a guy who wants to wear an Ant Man suit. You know, trying to save the world. You know, with the size of an insect, with the size of an insect to actually, <laughs> you know, do everything. I mean, as long as you can try, you know, not be able to get into the quantum realm. 
I mean, once you have to press in the, the shrinking button. But yes, Paul Rudd did a great job playing the role. I mean, he's definitely the right man to do it. I mean, I know there are other, other actors they would have chosen, but since he's the co-writer of it, yeah, why not? <laughs> it works. And yeah, he definitely brought in some, a lot of humor towards it. Yeah, cause he's always been a great actor. I mean, no doubt about it. In any movie he does, yeah, he's the right choice. I also thought Evangeline Lilly did a great job playing Hope. You know, I thought she really kicked ass, especially with those training scenes that we saw <laughs> between her and Lane. <laughs> that was a funny moment there. He was very tough. Um, and Michael Douglas, of course, um, definitely good for this role. I mean, it was great to see him again after all this time. I mean, I know he's been playing different roles in many movies. Um, always been known for playing detectives and you know, law firm guys, uh, corporate executives, and all of that. You know, he, not to mention the hero in the Romance in the Stone movies and all that. But definitely a perfect role for him to play a scientist. And it shows. You know. and I'm glad he's still with us today, you know, even after his mother died recently. You know, which, uh, which happens to be Kurt Douglas' wife. You know. Yeah, it's very sad. In fact, also, Kurt Douglas is going to be 100 years old uh, next year, too. That's hard to believe, too, considering how old this man is after suffering a stroke. Well, let's see how it turns out uh, when he lives. So there's, there's time to spare. And I, I know he's been struggling a lot over the years, too, I mean, since he had uh, cancer. But he's okay. And I'm glad he's uh, working again in movies with, with Ant-Man. Definitely the right choice to play a scientist. Um, a lot of great cast too. Um, uh, Michael Pena actually did a great, uh, was actually hilarious in the film, you know, as Lane's uh, best friend and cellmate, Lewis. Um, I like the scenes where, where he was doing these uh, conversations uh, as reactions to, to his story. I mean, where you get to see another person talking about this and talking about that. Yeah, using his mouth movements <laughs> on all the other characters. <laughs> I thought that was cool. They really did something here for, for Marvel. And they do it again in any other superhero film I've seen so far. Especially last year's uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, it was very fun. I mean, they knew exactly what they wanted. They wanted a lot of humor, a lot of action. A lot of great energy, everything. Yeah, I know I'm repeating myself, but who cares? I just love it. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad uh, this movie got made. I mean, as part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I mean, why not? We need more movies like this these days. I mean, it's part of um, what we're getting. I gotta say, Eager Wright definitely did a good job you know, writing the screenplay for the film along with his co-writer Joe Cornish as well as Anna McKay I mean they, they really had a lot of great humor towards it and it works and they got an actual suggestion towards the film because they, they could do a lot of that and it was great for Peyton Reed to direct this movie because coming from Bring It On and Down With Love he can definitely do a film like this and it shows incredible CGI special effects that they put into, especially the scenes with the insects, such as the ants. I mean, they're crawling around, they were even picking up the sugar cubes. You know, once you control it with um, the hearing aids, yeah, you can actually do your own commands on all the ants and every, that's crawling all over the entire room. I thought that was really cool that they did that. I enjoyed that scene. <laughs> Or the scene where you saw all the flying insects around. You know, Ant-Man was actually riding on them. Just to escape or or just to stop um, cross or where he goes. I thought that was really cool. Definitely check this out. You won't be disappointed. So anyway, I give Ant-Man 
five stars. I'm Joseph A. Saboro, and I'll see you later. Bye.